Introducing an all new channel, JG9 News, where we talk about all things happening in the NFL today in a completely relaxed, unscripted format. Newest video is out about how the Patriots hired Gerard Mayo as their next head coach. Be sure to check it out if you haven't already. And now, on with our feature presentation. Well, NFL, that was embarrassing. Last night, if you're watching as of the time this video drops, the Kansas City Chiefs played the Miami Dolphins in what was the first ever playoff game to be exclusively on a streaming service and be behind a paywall. Prior to this game, every single playoff game in NFL history was on over-the-air television, where you didn't need to subscribe to any sort of service. All you needed to do was to have an antenna or a television, and you could flip on the game to one of the big four channels, and it was there. But after NBC paid $110 million for the rights to throw a game on their streaming service, that all changed. And the results were, shall we say, not ideal. We don't know the full viewership numbers, and we might never know the numbers. Because the game was behind a paywall, the numbers don't have to be disclosed. So if we don't know anything in the next few days, you can bet that NBC was disappointed. But the amount of people complaining that they could not watch this game was staggering. And I don't mean people complaining about how they just didn't want to pay for Peacock and pay for a streaming service to watch a playoff game that they otherwise would have gotten for free in any other year. I mean people who had buffering issues, who had picture quality issues, and people at bars who couldn't get the game. Even at Westgate at Las Vegas, you could not watch the game because the Peacock feed went down. The only thing that struggled more than two or during this train wreck of a game was people trying to watch. But this video is not going the direction that you think it's going in. Look, I can sit up here and complain about how shameful it is if the NFL put a playoff game behind a paywall. And I can talk about how people were upset about this. But at the end of the day, we don't know if this was a disaster or not in the eyes of NBC. Because it's too early to tell, seeing as we don't know the numbers. Maybe NBC is thrilled with the numbers and the people who bought Peacock subscriptions. Maybe the NFL doesn't see the problem with this. And maybe this is the new normal where you have games in the playoffs taking place on streaming services. But that's not what this is about. Because the part about this game that bugged me more than anything else, even more so than the fact that this game was behind a paywall, this was, by far, the worst production for a playoff game that I've seen in the 21st century. This game was laughably bad, and simply put, a production of this quality was unacceptable for any NFL game, let alone a playoff game. Part of the problem with NBC and this game was that they were televising not one, not two, but three games this week in the playoffs. Alongside the Texans-Browns game earlier on Saturday and this game, you have the Rams-Lions game on Sunday night. And a network televising three games in one weekend? If it's a network like CBS, it's not a big deal, seeing as they have three crews designated for the NFL. You can have CBS televising three games in Wildcard Weekend and notice no drop-off whatsoever whether it comes to the on-air talent or the production truck. NBC, on the other hand, only televises one game a week. They don't have three crews. In fact, they are so thin from that perspective that Mike Tirico is calling two games in one wildcard weekend, which is unheard of. They do not have three crews for the NFL, so they need to find an additional two directors, an additional two graphics people, an additional two replay people, more camera people, and you get the idea. Again, with CBS or Fox, where they do five or six or so games every week, this isn't an issue. But with NBC, they don't have three crews, because they have no need for three crews during the season. But when you're televising three playoff games in one week, you've got to find people who might not have any experience working NFL games, and might be super raw. And that's a problem when it's a playoff game that people are paying money for, because that is not the time for production issues of which there were many. Now look, I've worked plenty of games in my life on the ESPN family and networks, both on the air and in the production truck. Mistakes happen. A mistake here or there? Yeah, it can be expected. But on football's biggest stage, and with that much frequency? This should be a lesson to the NFL. Don't give NBC a network that only televises one game a week, three games. They do not have the crews and the manpower and the quality control to do it, because this product was downright embarrassing. Because these were just some of the many, and I truly mean many, amateurish production errors that occurred during this disaster of a broadcast. 
if you were able to watch the broadcast, it would be behind a paywall. And keep in mind that for all of these, I don't care if Mike Tirico said something beforehand and explained the situation. A lot of people watch the game without audio, since they're at a bar, or watching on their phone in a public space, or something along those lines. You have to know your audience. And also keep in mind that I'm going in chronological order here. So that's the order for this, even though some mistakes were way more egregious than others. These are also not stylistic choices that I might disagree with. These are blatant errors that you wouldn't see on any other broadcast. And there's probably some that I missed, because there were a lot of them throughout the broadcast. On the opening drive of the game, after Isaiah Pacheco runs for a first down, we get some replays of the action, which is good. What's not good is that we miss the ball getting snapped on the next play. So the moment it cuts from a replay and does the Peacock logo transition, Pacheco already has the ball again. On their second drive, same thing. The director decides that this is the best time to run the graphic on Money Mahomes, which leads to us missing the ball getting snapped on one of the plays. The ball just happens to be in Mahomes' hands by the time the graphic is done. So far, rather minute things. They make an inference, but not a huge deal in the grand scheme of things. This next one, though? With 8.25 left in the first half, Mahomes hits Rice for a touchdown. The touchdown graphic appears on the air, Peacock adjusts the score of the game to make it 16-7, the scoring drive graphic appears, everyone thinks the play is good. And then, the play gets called back due to an illegal block in the back. Except nowhere, not once, does the flag graphic appear. The flag wasn't thrown late, it was thrown right as the penalty happened. And yet, Peacock not only adjusted the score, but didn't even show a flag graphic. That's just basic stuff. You don't adjust the score without making sure there are no flags. And if there's dirty laundry on the field, you put the graphic up as soon as it happens. Just teasing people into thinking that there was a touchdown on the play, when there obviously was not. Amateur hour right there. Graphics-wise, later in the second quarter, we see a graphic of Raheem Mostert, and the fact that at 31 years old, he's the second oldest player to have a 20-plus touchdown season. Cool stat, but it raises the obvious question. Who is first? Glad we had to clarify that it's NFL history that we're talking about. You could have used that space to say who's first. Yes, it's just a mystery. But right after that graphic is shown that is a bigger mystery than Blue's Clues, on third and two, Tua throws a pass to Moster that falls incomplete. Which raises the question, was this pass a forward pass? Big play because if that's backward, that's a fumble. And while Miami immediately fell on it, it's a loss of three instead of no loss. And it's honestly really close. If you watch this replay again, the ball is thrown at the 49 and 3 quarter mark, and it's touched by Moster at the 50. This one could easily be a backward pass, and the Chiefs have a case to challenge. So a replay would be extremely nice here, especially an overhead shot with the blue line. You know what we get? A replay where you can't even see the freaking ball! I'm not cropping anything out here. I'm not altering anything. The replay we get is a replay where the ball is not even in the frame. That's a big play that could change what the Dolphins do on fourth down. It could change the entire complexion of the game. And we get absolutely nothing. Not only is this just an objectively bad replay, in terms of us not being able to figure out if this was forward or not, but it's an objectively bad replay to not even have the ball in the frame. Raheem Mostert wasn't the only one who dropped the ball here. Fast forward to the third quarter, when on second and ten, Mahomes throws a pass to the rookie wideout, Rice, who gets pushed out of bounds right around the 31-yard line. Is this a first down? Honestly, it's pretty close. Here's a still frame of the moment that Rice's foot hits the white. Bottom line, if you're watching this game in real time, without any audio or anything like that, you have no clue if this is a first down or not. But the referees do. So, is this a first down? Well, guess what? NBC doesn't show it. They don't freaking show it. They show Rice going down, they show a replay of him getting hurt, and then they cut to commercial without you having any idea of if this is a first down or not. Only when you get back from commercial do you know that Rice did in fact get the first down. And this isn't like what the NFL does during challenges, which I hate, where they make the call while you're away and they intentionally do it like that. This was a conscious choice by NBC to just not show the graphic on the down and distance. 
it's not like there was a measurement that we were waiting on or anything like that. I had to check a third-party app on my phone to see whether Rice got the first down, because Peacock just forgot to update the down and distance. And after the very next play, the Chiefs are forced to burn a timeout because the play clock is winding down, and they're confused. But guess what? We have no idea, because with zero seconds on the play clock, we've got a shot at Tua, even though the Dolphins are on defense! Why with zero on the play clock are we not focused on what's happening on the field? Why are we completely in the dark, and why are we showing someone on the sideline with zero on the clock? If the clock's at zero, you have to be ready for the ball to be snapped, or for something to happen one way or the other. And we're focused on Tua. No reason for that. None at all. Show the action on the field when the clock is expiring. It is not that hard. Just first grade stuff that every other broadcast does. Except for the Peacock broadcast for some reason. And then, my personal favorite. The cream of the crop. The best for last. And something that you would not even see on a really bad ESPN Plus broadcast of a collegiate game which is run entirely by students. On 39, Tua hits Cedric Wilson for the first down. We get a replay of the catch, which is obviously good. But then, look at what happens next. They don't get out of the replay in time, and they rewind on the wheel. I didn't add that in, folks. That was a legitimate broadcast that cost $110 million to get the rights to. They didn't get out of the replay after it showed the catch and they show the replay person rewinding in the truck. Obviously, I've seen rewinding happen before during a broadcast, but that's by design to show something in a play, or show something on the All-22 or the Skycam, to see what someone was seeing. It's a conscious choice to allow the color commentator to elaborate on a given play. During an NFL broadcast that wasn't a preseason game, let alone a freaking playoff game, I've never seen this. I've never seen a half-second rewind where they just forgot to get out of the replay. This half-second summed up the Peacock broadcast more than anything else. It summed up just what a mess it was. Heck, I've done replay before on productions. I was way better on air than I was in the truck, but I've done replay before. Was I the best in it? Absolutely positively not. I was not that good. But I never, ever did this! I never rewound the wheel! And we see this mistake in a playoff game! Truly symbolic of everything that happened with this broadcast. Now look, I don't think this is the end of the road for streaming exclusive games. The game between these two teams behind me right here, I think it's a new normal. I think we're going to see a lot more games on streaming services exclusively. I hate it. I hate the fact that it costs a lot of money now to be an NFL fan. The barrier for entry for a fan is rising. But I get it. There's a lot of money to be made from streaming exclusive games. I get it. The NFL cares about the dollar. And this makes a lot of money, so I get it. Having said that, though, this was unacceptable. NBC does not have the manpower. They do not have the crews. They do not have the capability to show three games. They only show one game a week, sometimes two. You expect them to do three in a playoff weekend? That's ignorance on your part and it leads to bad quality like this one. Again, if they do streaming exclusive games on like Amazon Prime or Paramount Plus, at least they have the capability to do it. NBC very clearly does not. And unless the NFL views this product as acceptable, then there has to be major changes because this was just embarrassing on so many levels. Awful, awful production by any standards, let alone a playoff game. Was the Peacock game a disaster from a ratings perspective and a subscription perspective? I don't know. The jury's out on that one, and we won't know the full numbers for a few days. But from a quality perspective, it absolutely was a disaster. And I'm not talking about the fact that the game stunk. This broadcast was unacceptable. Simply put, this broadcast was unacceptable. Missing snaps, false alarming a touchdown, not showing appropriate replays, having rewound footage, withholding critical information from the viewer for no reason, just because of your own incompetence and negligence. NBC only has one crew for the NFL, so when you allow them to do three games, and you just have to throw people in there that are rusty and don't have a ton of experience, you're going to get mistakes like this. It's inevitable, but it doesn't change the fact that from a production standpoint, this was the most amateur level production for a playoff game that I've seen in the 21st century. This was embarrassing, because on so many levels, the Peacock broadcast was a load of crock. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to JJ9Shop.com 
and be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL Trivia for cash prizes at 9pm Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.